Greetings once again from quarantine, everybody. Today, NBC Sports Washington. Very excited and proud to welcome on the pole sitter for the Indianapolis 500. You see him right there, Marco Andretti, driver of the 98 Honda for Andretti Autosport. Thank you for taking some time. We see the beautiful Indianapolis Motor Speedway there behind you. I'm sure you're knocking out some media today before heading back home to Pennsylvania for a couple of days. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's great. Absolutely. And I was doing some research. So you've been coming here at Indianapolis your entire life, but you've yeah. been here as a driver for 14 years. And out of those 14 years, this is your first time that you put it on the pole and you had a fast car in the lead up to the fast nine and qualifying yesterday. I'm just curious when you crossed the finish line and you were told that you actually put it on the pole, what were your emotions when you realized, Oh my God, I'm actually going to be leading the field to green. I was screaming in my helmet. Like I was so happy. And then I came in and I had like, blown my voice out so I'm trying to do interviews and people think I'm choked up and crying but I actually just didn't have a voice um, but uh, I was just so pumped and so happy it was right on time we needed that and um, it uh, this place is so special to our family and uh, my grandfather was over the moon excited and and yeah it's actually my 16th year uh, here 15th in IndyCar so uh, you know I've been on the front row once but the wrong side I was third so this is my second second front row but I'm on the right side. That's right. We're on the right side of things this year in 2020, which has been a crazy year otherwise. But it was really cool, too, to see your dad, Michael, and your grandfather, Mario. They were unbelievably excited. They were crazy amped. I read that Mario was at home and he was jumping up and down so hard that his head hit and went through the ceiling. Like, I feel like I would have paid to have a camera on your grandfather when you I think he, your slide. I, I think he thinks he, he, no, he thinks he's taller than he is. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I'm sure that's what it is, right? You got to give him some crap for that. But that was been awesome, though, to to give your dad and your grandfather, who obviously with the Andretti name in Indianapolis, it's synonymous with winning. Like that had to be amazing. It was great. It was the first thing, first time in my career, my 15 year career, that I was able to do something that my dad hasn't. So that was really special to me too. So um, yeah, I mean, 33 years since my grandfather did it. I was two months old, and I was probably here. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, really, really special times. I mean, yesterday was a really big day for me and the team as far as a morale booster as well. And, um, you know, everybody's feeling really good about the race. And uh, I feel like right now we're the ones to beat. They're going to have to beat us. So it's a, it's a really good feeling. For sure. That's got to be a really good feeling. Have you ever had that feeling coming to Indy in the past when you feel like you are the car to beat? I have, and, and we were until we uh, beat ourselves with, with something happening, whether it be in the pits or, or strategy or something. And, uh, or, or myself, or a tire coming apart. I mean, there's been, you name it, it's, we've gone through it. And I think that's why you saw a lot of people uh, pretty happy for us, because we've, yeah. we've gone through a lot, you know, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can we can keep this, you know, fairy tale month going. I mean, almost every time we go on track, we're quickest. So it's, uh, it's, it's been awesome. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what I say. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, there's no fans at Indy this year, but there were a lot of fans that were parked right outside the Speedway grounds yesterday. And they were watching as you completed your final lap. I'm sure you saw that video, man. That had to give chills up your spine to see all those fans going nuts for you. It was so cool. I, honestly, I can't imagine this place would have probably erupted. Um, oh, God. Yeah, so, but it's a, it's a double edge, right? Like, it's, it's a bummer. I can't celebrate with them. But at the same time, our, our alternative right now is being at home on the couch. So, we, like, I think the world needs sport if we can do it in a safe way, which uh, we've been able to do under, under Roger's uh, new ownership. So, he's... He's taken a hit business-wise, and we're very thankful that he he uh, he has a passion for this motor this uh, for motorsports and IndyCar in particular. He can afford it. Don't worry about Roger. He can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> also, I saw that a couple of your buddies. I think it was Joseph Newgarden, Elio Castroneves, and Will Power. They were going nuts too. And part of me is thinking, okay, they're Penske, they're Chevy. They're going to be like, eh, whatever. Didn't get the pole. Sucks for him. But they were going crazy, too. That must have been really cool to see the camaraderie. And that was a thing that I think made it really cool as well. All of your competitors. I didn't see one competitor of yours that was not happy for you yesterday. Yeah, even the guy I was able to squeak by, Dixon. I mean, he's, exactly. he's such a such a class guy. And uh, it, it feels really, really humbling to, to have that uh, kind of respect from your peers, you know. And, and you don't see that very often, so I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm glad that you brought up Scott, and I saw that you tweeted earlier last night that he's the GOAT because the yeah. GOAT. Um, and you beat him by just the hair, 0 .17, 0 0.017 seconds. What did he say to you when he came and gave you a hug and said, congrats, Marco, you're on the pole? That he's, he's if it wasn't him, he's so happy it was me. And, uh, and Emma, his wife, said the same thing. And uh, 
Yeah, they're still cool. Him and I have been friends since since the beginning of, uh, you know, since I've been here in my rookie year. So 2006, 15 years we've been friends. So, um, and him and I have had some good run-ins and good battles. And, and uh, you know, he, he's seen me. He's actually capitalized on a lot of my misfortunes, and, and he knows that. So I think it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Also, just as an aside, before we get to a little bit more of the racing, I had no idea that you were boys with iced tea. Like, that's such <laughs> a flex. That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty unique. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, we, we uh, he's a, I'm a hip hop fan and he's a race car fan. It's the easiest way to put it. Goes right together, doesn't it? That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Going back to the fans for a minute. As I said, you've been coming here for 15, 16 years as a driver, but your entire life, you've been coming here to watch your dad and your grandpa compete. And this is the first time that this in huge motorsports facility is going to be dormant with no fans. What was it like the first time that you strapped in and took a lap at speed and you realized for a second, huh, okay, there is literally nobody here and there's going to be nobody here. That, that had to be kind of an eerie feeling. I think it's going to hit home on, uh, on race day because when you come out Gasoline Alley, the place is just incredible. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's electric when you come out. So we're going to be missing that part of it. But, um, yeah, it's, like I said earlier, we're just, we're lucky that we're putting on a race and hopefully – Hopefully the viewership's good and people are watching and we put on a great show. So Chevy uh, seemed to not have as much speed in qualifying, but in race trim, race trim, they seemed a little bit better, but they only put one car in the fast nine. Honda seems to have the upper hand, no doubt, but do you think that Chevy may be holding back a little bit or do you think it's going to be more so a track position game on Sunday because of this new arrow? Well, you definitely, you don't hold back. You don't sandbag and qualify and you give it everything you got. So I think Honda just brought it this year. I think they, uh, you know, really thankful for the for the power that they've they've you know we've rolled off with with them and it makes my job a little bit easier for sure. And and my guys built a rocket ship. The car looks so so great. And um, however, you're exactly right. I think in race trim it comes down more to balance, not just power. So um, you know we're gonna be we're gonna be having to fight everybody. That's what IndyCar is all about. And it's so competitive. And we have these cars so wrung out and so close together. The drivers are so good. The teams are so good. And uh, it's going to, that's IndyCar. We're going to have to beat the best if we want to win the Indy 500. No doubt about that. Every single year you got to, and you're about the best that there is so far at Indianapolis. I want to go back to 2006 for one minute because, full disclosure, I'm a NASCAR guy hard, at my heart. Um, but in 06, I was 10 years old, and that was the first IndyCar race. Of course, when you lost to Sam Hornish Jr. by that much, that was the first memory that I really have of IndyCar. But that was, so long ago I feel like you were a different driver then obviously being your rookie year you were a different man back then fast forward to 2020 this could kind of at least for me I want I want to know what you think about it but it feels like a little bit of a start anew and a different chapter for you on track specifically are you kind of getting those vibes a little bit or is it kind of just business as usual no for sure there's something special about this month and uh um you know we've just the way we've rolled off has just been incredible i, I don't remember being this dominant in, in 15 years i've been dominant here but not this dominant mm -hmm. during the month so um we need to go and do it in the race when it when it really counts i mean th this poll it feels like a win but uh we want to go get the big one and we have the best seat in the house for it so we'll see you said earlier this week that not having a win since 2011, no doubt about it, it does weigh on you, but you don't wake up in the morning and think about that and become all depressed about it. However, this week has felt like a win for you so far. Doing that on Sunday is going to be a completely different animal, though. How are you going to wake up this week um, when you wake up in the morning thinking, all right, I got the fast car, I got the track position, all I got to do is keep it up front and do what I know how to do best which is go around Indy faster than anybody else. Play the strategy right. You got all the cards in your favor right now, Marco. But how are you going to do yeah. this week leading up to the race? I feel like they're going to have to beat me if they want to win the Indy 500. That's how I feel. And I think, uh, you know, we're just going to have to go execute the things that are in our power. And um, it's going to be a track position race. And like you say, I, my job is to keep it up there. And if, we're, if we get shuffled back, it's going to be the don't quit type thing. And I think we have a card that's a good race car in traffic as well. So – um, you know, I'm not going to quit until the, until the checkered flag's out. There's a lot of elements of unknown that are going to be thrown my way, and we're going to have to adapt better than others. And then from there, it's, stars have to align to win the race, and maybe they will. Have any of your teammates come to you with some speed secrets or any other friends that you have in the paddock, or are you keeping pretty tight-lipped? Um, well, I mean, yeah, we're, we're a pretty open book as a, well, seven-car team basically now, six in the satellite car. So our debriefs go – 
super late at night, but um, yeah, we're pretty open book. We share, you know, until maybe the last few laps. I think you've seen it, you know, I guess the last time in the team would have been me and Hunter Ray in 14 trying to, trying to beat each other for the win. So uh, and that was even dad on dad was on his car. So it was a strange dynamic. So dad's goal was to beat me in that race with Ryan and they did buggers, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I think it's every man for himself until the last uh, stint of the race. Your second uncle, John, unfortunately passed away earlier this year. He left a hell of a legacy on track, but I think an even bigger one off track doing all the research and, funding that he did for colon cancer. And I know that you're going to be paying homage to him with a special helmet this week. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, he, uh, he ran a, a special uh, like block letter and dready on his helmet that, that I'm going to, that I have on mine and we put it on the car as well. And on my, on my undershirt and, and on my belt. And so, yeah, I mean, we honor him from that standpoint. And we also have the hashtag check it for Andretti on the car for him too, for early detection of, uh, of cancers and colon cancer. So, um, you know, he's, he's already saved so many lives with that, you know, campaign that program. So, um, you know, hopefully we can keep that going. That, that's what he wants us to push. Absolutely. Uh, John was also famous for running the double. Do you think that's something you'd ever maybe want to explore? I'll never say never. I mean, that would be interesting. I think, uh, the double that's Charlotte, right? Yeah. I mean, it, you have to really know how to drive a stock car. I mean, he, he kind of had the stock car. He had, he drove both and he was very comfortable with both. And, uh, I think it'd be like baseball and basketball, learning, trying to learn uh, a cup car, you know, so especially going up, up against the talent over there. So never say never, but who knows? Yeah, well, we'll see, right? Let's we'll focus see. on the task here now. So Thanks. best of luck, Marco. Keep that number 98 up front on Sunday. I think it's safe to say that the media doesn't really root for drivers, but we're rooting for this story because it's pretty cool how it's coming together. So best of it luck. We'll be watching on Sunday. Thank you. Thanks for having me, bud.